Hey everybody, welcome back to another video and this video and some of the videos following it would be dedicated to FastAPI. It would be more like a crash course series for FastAPI. So if you've been following this channel for a considerable amount of time, then you might know that I'm a big fan of FastAPI. And I've made a lot of videos by leveraging a FastAPI server like we've built voice bots, we've built chat applications, we have experimented with different LLMs, uh, by leveraging a fast API server. So this series is dedicated for those viewers who want to build something like that. Uh, maybe they want to build a thin layer or a lightweight server for their LLM based applications, even for their SaaS products and different other use cases. So in this video, we'll be exploring how you can build an API endpoint for yourself. So when you talk about building an API endpoint, obviously you need to send in some data and you have to get some data out of the API, right? So we'll be exploring all those features like how to add query parameters, how to add path parameters, how to uh, you know work around with optional parameters, and what it takes to build a lightweight fast API server. All right, so to get started, you need the fast API package first. So you can install it by typing in pip install and fast API. And that's it. Uh, it's going to install all the uh, FastAPI packages and its dependencies that you need. I already have it installed, so I don't need this step. Uh, so I have made a folder, learn FastAPI, and I have my Python file in place. All right, so the first thing you need to do, you need to import the package. So I'm going to say from FastAPI, import fast api and that's it next you need to initialize a object for your fast api instance and as you can see uh, by the way i'm using code Stroll by mistral so uh, it's a great tool if you haven't seen the videos around it uh, i would definitely recommend that you hook it up within your vs code it really boosts up your productivity i'm going to hook the video up into the cards go check it out so I'm just going to hit tab to actually complete it because it's pretty simplified stuff. Next, we need to uh, initialize our basic route. So with FastAPI, all you need is this particular syntax that you're seeing on the screen, which says uh, at the score app dot get. And through this, you can define your particular route. So it can be items. It can be products, you know, as per your need. All right, so once that is done, we need to define a method that is hooked up to that route. So with this particular uh, with this particular route, I can say def main, and that's pretty much it. And then I need to return something. Obviously, it would be a JSON formatted message, and I'm going to complete the suggestion, and that's it. That's the most lean server that you can build and we've just done it like within two minutes so it's great so let's go ahead and run it so i'm gonna go here and uh, so there's a specific fast api command so you can say fast api dev and main.py and that's it our server is running pretty simple stuff so let's go ahead and click over here and there we go. So this is our like most basic root level route and it's sending us the message. We also have the option to pretty print it. You can toggle this and you would get a nicely formatted JSON for yourself. Another thing that I really like about FastAPI is that it comes default with Swagger documentation, something that you might have to you know, integrate yourself if you're using uh, a different technology stack. But with uh, fast API, it comes as default. So you can type in slash docs and there you go. All your documents, oh, sorry, all your routes would be listed within this particular document. So if you expand it and try it out and execute and there you go, there's your message. Pretty simple stuff and awesome. All right, so this was all about how you can create a basic route. But obviously, uh, when you're talking about building a lightweight server, uh, you need to build routes that are receiving some sort of a path parameter. So how can you do that? So let's type in app.get and 
then we have uh, this particular suggestion which we can tweak. So let's say we uh, we're building a lightweight server for products, you know, to list products or to get products, a list of products or to store a particular product. So let's uh, phase our scenario around it. So for this particular case, I'll add in um, the word product and let's say the name of the product that's fine all right next we need to hook up a particular method which is def get product and i'm receiving name which happens to be a string so pretty simple stuff and then we can go ahead and return the product name all right so all my changes are basically reflected within the server so all i need to do is go here and there you go you would see another route and here you can add in your product name let's say uh, coke and hit run and there we go we have a nicely formatted json object with the product name as coke cool stuff so these are uh this is how you can add a path parameter uh, but mostly, uh, for example, if you're uh, working on a page which has like a, uh, a listed table along with pagination, so how do you go around it? Because then uh, as a get route, you would need some more variables around it, more like um, query parameters where you can specify the page number or maybe, you know, if you want to skip some of the uh, items, so how you can do that. So that's pretty simple. All you need to do, uh, let's replicate. Um, all right, so um, no, I don't need price. What I do need is a method which is get product, get listed products. Let's say get listed products, and I can add my name as a string over here and then we can add a page variable which happens to be an int and once that is done i can return the page and the product name as a json format which is kind of cool so let's go ahead to my swagger docs and let's refresh it wait Okay, since both of the routes are same, they're not being reflected over here. So it actually caught the last one, get listed product, but we don't want this behavior. So let's say uh, products, let's say products just for time being. And okay, now we get this route over here and our previous route is maintained over here. So let's go ahead and type it. So we need Coke not code, coke, and page number one, and we hit run, and there we go. This is our response for our product name and for a particular page number. So obviously you won't be returning the page. Instead, you would be working around with this page number and sort of, uh, you know, fetching uh, certain records uh, that fit your page definition. So, uh, but this is just an example. All right, you can also add uh, optional parameters, optional query parameters, something that you don't need to specify every single time. So there's a particular way for you to do that. Let's say I want to skip uh, some products uh, and how I can basically do that. So what I'll do, I'll add the skip part, uh, sorry, the name skip, and I'll say int because this would be a integer, and then I'll say none. And I can also initialize it with none to actually uh, direct my route that this is basically a optional parameter. So if I go here, okay, the changes are reflected. Let's say save. All right, so here within the get listed products, uh, as you can see the name, it is required because it's a path parameter. Then we have page, which is also required and it's a query parameter. And then we have skip and it's kind of optional. It's not required and you can specify this within your query. So that's how you can basically uh, build uh, your simple routes within like no time. Just 
you don't actually have to worry about anything. You have the documentation in place. You can just uh, specify a particular method and you're up and running with your fast API server. So it's perfect for lightweight applications, especially LLM based applications. Um, it's Python based and you can, uh, it's very well integrated with different machine learning frameworks and libraries. So you can leverage a whole deal of stuff uh, by using fast API. So this is like your very first introduction of how you can build a custom endpoint. And the next video would deal uh, with more uh, specific endpoints like post, update, and delete. So don't forget to watch it and don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you in the next video.